Hobson, man. Thank you for being on the show. This is awesome. Man, Scott, thank you, brother. Happy New Year's to you, bro. You too. Did you have a good New Year's? I did. Um, it wasn't really eventful. We stayed at home. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same here. Um, Seven Dust. Boring. Yeah, well, you were at the New Year's the New Year's show for Seven Dust, right? A few years ago. Yeah, that that one where they did the three concerts in a row. Yes. Yeah, that was. Oh yeah, you were at my house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's was when, when I interviewed. You Clint. interviewed uh, Clint. Yeah, that's right. Oh man, man that, that was, was one of the best. Yeah. <laughs> Did yeah, you go all three people... nights? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, every single night. <clears throat> Dang, man. That's amazing. Yeah. That was so cool. We had so many of the guys in the Seven Dust Facebook group family come and everything. So that was awesome, man. For three days. That was that was a lot. <laughs> but it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You connect with uh, the Seven Dust fans. I mean, they're like, I mean, they're whole different. That, that, that's massive. You know? Oh, yeah. Chris Ramon. That's right. I think. Yeah. What an awesome Chris. group. Yeah, man, you got Chris and you got Sammy. Yes. Oh, it's yeah, she's Adams. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, and you're like, uh, you're friends with a bunch of them. I mean, like I know a couple yeah. of oh, them. Oh, yeah. But you connect with them at shows and stuff. It's it's, it's crazy, uh, man. You know, I think about it. It's like I've known some of these people for over 10 years, which is crazy when I think about it. The amount of time that has, has gone. Um, and I've seen people come together, people who've had – children and it's just it's awesome to see that even now that i'm i still connect with a lot of people within that group so i love it man it's awesome i i love it too and and just to think that we wouldn't even know i wouldn't even know you probably if one for seven us you know or this band group <laughs> there's crazy. no other band like that right for me it's, like i don't it's connect. Not... <clears throat> yeah seven dust man is just that group is in a whole new a different breed i think is i just think it was just the grassroots of how they started and just they just always have just been a gen genuine group of guys. And I think that's what has kept them just so relevant. They're just so consistent. They don't deviate from who they are as people. So good point. And they're so point. nice and they never, they never have the rock star attitude. Absolutely not. They really don't down to earth. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to make this whole thing about seven of us, but man, I'm going to tell you, I I'm a little bummed that seasons didn't come to Atlanta for the anniversary, Maybe but I've been watching us. seasons. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hopeful that it comes next year. I'm just, oh man, that that's one of my favorites. And I remember when they had the live stream of it back when the pandemic was going mm -hmm. on. That was just awesome, just hearing those songs. So I'm just, man, I'm still got my fingers crossed that maybe Atlanta gets the <laughs> show. <laughs> but it's been awesome. Yeah. Video. Okay, man. Yes. Okay. Real. This will be the last seven us question I ask. What are your top three seven us albums? Oh gosh, man. I That's so you funny, know I, always, I always see you ask other people questions like this, and now I'm like, oh, gosh. <clears throat> I have to say Animosity because that was the very first album that got me into, into uh, Seven Dust. I'm about to say Animosity, but it was the first album that got me into Seven Dust. And it was crazy because it was uh, – I know I heard Angel Song being on, like, VH1 and MTV at that time, but it was hearing Love Again on 99X in Atlanta. When I heard oh, that man, song, I was just like, man, I was like, wait a minute. <clears throat> and so I just real I was like, man, so I didn't realize that they were saying through that the Angel Sun. So I was like, man, I need to go get this album. And I was not disappointed, man. That album just still one of my top favorite seven albums, man. Um, Me too. All right, what's your second one? Gosh, second one. Gosh, man. I would have to say Cold Day Memory. Because Ooh, yes. when Clint came back, man, it's just like it just felt like they had something to prove and they just, man, that, that album was just straight through just from beginning to end. I could say the whole album just, it's perfect. I love yeah, cold really day memory. Is, man. That's in my top three too, bro. Yes, That's, it's yes. amazing. But yes. you hear Clint's voice back for the first time since like 2003 yeah, or whatever. It's crazy, oh, it's so man. Good. That was just, I remember going to that, um, the, uh, release party they had, um, at the heart, Rock, heart Rock cafe in Atlanta when that release, and it was so yes. cool because they did a couple of acoustic songs. I will never forget that because I was there that night. Then the next day they were playing in a Best Buy in Ackworth. And I wow. was working at the Barnes and Nobles in, in Morrow, Georgia. So that's like on the total opposite. <laughs> <laughs> and so as soon as I got work, I drove all the way up there and saw them play uh, Kusa said that Best Buy, man. So that was awesome. I was, oh yeah, man. I was there, man. <laughs> that was that's crazy. So cool. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was, man, it was so fun. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. The last. Oh, what's your third one? That's oh, your yeah, first third two. one. Oh my gosh. Um, it's so hard, man, because I I love Home because of just how just hard that that album hits, man. The low end on the album is awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Gosh, I gotta say, all I see is war. I know people oh, like oh, yeah. you know people don't usually go for the more recent album, but all I see is uh-huh. war. That album to me is is. It reminds me a lot of Cold Day Memory in the sense that I love this every song in the album, man. And Risen is like one of my favorite seven of oh, songs of all time. I just I can listen to this song every single day, and it just still hits me the same. It's just, oh, what a great song! So consistent, great album. Yeah. Yes. Um. So I'm assuming Seasons is somewhere in the top five. Yeah, man. Gosh, if I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. It could be anywhere. Yeah. That would have been ne- probably the next one. That and the the <laughs> right. South Side Acoustic uh album. That one was oh, so good too, because yes. that came out during that the season's era. So, yes. yeah, definitely those two. <laughs> uh, gr- growing up, man, you're pretty tight with your family, right? I love, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You when you post stuff about your family, I, I'm the same way with my family. Did your family listen to a lot of music in the house? Uh, you know what, my dad listened to a lot of Miles Davis. Yeah, that, I do remember that. Um, he he started collecting his whole like discography, so. That was uh that was one aspect. Um I mean my family wasn't really like music music deeply per se, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. um there was some here and there. Yeah. Uh, so did your brother listen to anything? I mean, what was he into? Well, he was, you know, back when uh I wanna say around like when I was in middle school, so he was in high school, he was still a lot of R and B at the time and hip hop, so of course, I was just listening to the, the same things he was listening to. So um, that was a part of what I grew up with was R&B and uh, hip hop, especially Outkast in Atlanta at that time. Oh, so man. that was definitely a Best. big part of my my youth. Um, How great was Outkast? Man, uh, that's just phenomenal. Gosh, it's crazy. Just thinking back on their, their whole just career is just amazing, man. Just to know that they've come from Atlanta just always been one of those things I've been proud of to have a, a a duo like that come from hometown. So yeah, like them and gosh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh <laughs> that yeah, one. I, I listen to that too. <clears throat> that was um another group back when I was in middle school. Um, I listened to music then. Yeah, yeah. I I wasn't deep into the music at that point, but I was I was still listening to stuff. Um, w- w- when did you get your guitar? When did you start playing guitar? Yeah, now that was when I graduated high school. Yeah, because that 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 high school years, that's when I the I call my musical awakening. That was like 98, 99. That was when TRL was really big and that's when you know, it was it was the uh, battle of the boy bands <laughs> against the <laughs> rock guys. And um yeah, I just always remember seeing this band number 2 and number 1 all the time. And seeing this video with the bullet flying through, and, and little I know it was a band called Corn at that time. Um, and yeah. I was just like, man, it's just it sounded so different. I couldn't put my my head around it. But I was like, this sounds so just unique and unlike anything I've ever heard. And then I heard Gat the Life, which is this shows how ignorant I was. I didn't know that Gat the Life and Follow I mean, and Freak on Leash was made by the same band. <laughs> I heard one song on the radio that I heard, I saw Freak on Leash on, on MTV, and I was like, wait a minute, these. These this guys too- made both of those songs. <laughs> so, man, I'm telling you, I, I, when that album released that August, I had my brother take me to, um, I forget what music place we went to down in Midtown Atlanta. Uh, but we, I bought Father Lee. I will never forget getting inside the car and had my CD walk, man. And I'm listening. I was like, something's wrong with this the CD, man. Because it was just, you know, that Father Lee had the 13 seconds of silence yes. on that CD. So I sat there for the longest time. I almost literally almost went back inside that, that store <laughs> to see if they could uh, do a return. But then I, I looked in the back of the cover and I saw it said 13. So I was like, let me go to 13. <laughs> and sure enough. But yeah, that was it, man. And then, you know, once I got into corn, man, it just opened the floodgates. And when it came to graduation, I told mom I want a guitar for graduation. That's all I want. That's all I want. So she ended up getting me a guitar for graduation, and I just taught myself how to play. <laughs> what, what what guitar did you ask for? Man, it was so crazy. See, I didn't I didn't know the ins and outs of guitars like that at that point. So I got this uh, a guitar from a uh, guitar center, like a Squire. It was like a like a Fender. It was like a Fender guitar. 
it yeah. came with an amp. So, it, you know, it was enough to get me just started and just like excited another play. But I didn't know anything about, you know, these different guitars from different companies and stuff. So that's why I, was, I started looking at Corn. I saw the, you know, they were playing Ibanez guitars. I was like, I gotta get an Ibanez guitar. And of course, when they came out, everybody wanted a seven string guitar. And so I got to that point, I got the six string and then I got a seven string. It's so funny how I'm up here just trying to rush the course of trying to learn stuff man I, I didn't even play six string for that long before getting a seven string <laughs> so <laughs> right. my, my wrist was trying to get used to playing a six string guitar oh yeah a, a seven string i was like oh my gosh but i got used <laughs> to it man and um you know that was in the early days of the internet so we didn't have youtube teaching you how to play guitar yeah how'd so you I learn go, yeah so i would go to um bookstores i would get the guitar world magazines um guitar mm. one um they did have tabs online too. So I would do that and I would also listen by ear. So I, I, I learned a lot by ear as well, just hearing the the notes and just playing them and just realizing what bar chords were and just fiddling around till I heard the sound like, okay, it sounds like this. And so it's just <laughs> once I started listening to it, listening to the song and playing along with it, it just helped me to, to figure things out. What'd your brother think about all this, this changing of style? Oh, man. <clears throat> man, he he loved it, man. It, it's funny. Oh, cool. it's, with my brother and with my best friend, um, uh, I grew up with, with name Art. It was so funny. I will never forget. You know, I, I came from a high school that wasn't really rock. You know what I mean? So right. <laughs> I was always kind of nervous to our friends. Like, man, I'm listening to this band and stuff. But uh, he was one of my friends that, that he got it. He was like, man, this sounds cool. Because he could hear the hip-hop influence in there. That's why. I that's how I try to win more. <laughs> like, man, you hear the, the low end, the bass and stuff. But, I mean, that was a cool thing. And I think that's, you know a reason why Father Lear was as successful as it was, you know, with putting that, you know, West Coast hip hop influence in with the rock, man. I mean, and Corn was one of those bands that just did it like effortlessly, you know, and, and made it work. Um, so I think that's one of the real reasons why Father Lear was so groundbreaking, man. It just, you know, it, it defined genres, <laughs> you know. Would this so, be your favorite album, Father Lear? Or is this like your go-to? Man, Follow the leader is going to always hold a special place because that's the reason why I picked up a guitar. So mm. that that's held in a, in a high regard. My favorite corn album of all time, though, would have to be Untouchables. Oh, that yeah. album, and it's so funny because it's it, it's that's an album I think that's kind of divided the whole just corn fan base because you know for one that that album got leaked real early, man. I think that mm. really hurt them. You know. I think it could have been more successful successful than what it was, man. Because at that point, when they're actually released, the album was already on the internet, man. But that album, it, it, to me, I feel like it was just Korn's masterpiece. And mm -hmm. I remember seeing that behind the scenes with Michael Bonhorn. Just you could tell he was working them, them guys hard, man. But <laughs> the cool thing is that I think you know you hear the end results and you hear the fruits of their labor in the album, man. Sonically, musically, lyrically, it just. I still don't hear an album that sounds like that. I remember they wow. were one of the first bands that recorded from a, a, it was a thing called the Euphonic System. So it was a new a recording technology at that time. Korn was mm -hmm. one of the first bands that used that. Um, so it made the sounds more more clear and had more clarity to it. And then mm -hmm. on top of the fact, you got Michael Beinhorn, who just, the guy's just good at producing. He plays, I know he did a lot of synths in, um, in Untouchables as well. But um, yeah, man, that that album from start to finish just is so epic, and the choruses are so big on the album. And you know, I know some people, you got the corn hardcore that that love the first two albums, and you know, I understand yeah. that, I get it. But I feel like that album just was a culmination of everything up until that point. And I remember I told Monkey when I saw him back in Atlanta. Yeah, um, I said, man, Untouchables to me sounded like. If this was you all's last album, this would be it. <laughs> he had joked around and said, you know, hey, it could have been that way with, with everything that was going on with them. Because you know, had a lot of stuff going on with, that, with alcohol and just stuff. Oh, man, drugs and, and alcohol. Stuff, that man. was, yeah. yeah. So he was kind of jokingly saying, hey, man, that could that could have been the last one with how things were going. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me want to go back and listen to that album. It's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, Untouchables, that was the follow-up to... Uh, issues um, issues okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah let's see at that point yeah. you know that was a that was a two-year gap uh, for corn so that was like the longest span of time that mm -hmm. they had between albums so that you know that was a very anticipated album to come out um so i think that was a lot of what kind of 
had people hyped up about, you know, like what was Corn going to do next after Issues? You know, when you brought up the, the album was leaked, that was a big thing back in the day. I remember when Deftones yeah. White White Pony came out and everybody was, people were listening to it in the parking lot. I went, me and my buddy Carl went to the Midnight Cell. Yeah. And uh, we were such dorks back then. We we're like, we're not going to listen to the leaked. Uh, we're waiting, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, all our friends are listening to it, you know, in the parking lot. I just remember they're playing it's... it loud. And, <laughs> oh, man. We're, like, we're true fans. We're going to wait. But. <laughs> Do albums leak now? I mean, is that a thing still? It's so funny. It's like you don't really hear about that anymore. I guess yeah, like the Pirate Bay and all stuff, that. Yeah, yeah, you don't hear about it as much anymore. But you're right back at that time, it was just, it was huge, man. That really, I think that kind of, you know, shaped where we are right now with the whole music industry and stuff with streaming platforms and everything because of, because of that happening. That was just, you know, I think it was a situation where the industry didn't know how to deal with it. You know, how can you stop this? <laughs> you know, they had different methods yeah. in which they tried to stop it. But it's just, I mean, how can you once <laughs> it's out, the people will find a way to, to get to it. Did you ever have a LimeWire back in the day where you, where you burn your own albums and own, like kind of rip your own songs? I call it LimeWire, but there's other ones. I'm trying like Metallica sued uh, Napster. Oh, yeah. And, and Napster, yeah, stuff. yeah. I know I had one of them. I'm I'm, I'm guessing it, I'm, it probably was LimeWire. I'm trying to. <laughs> trying to backtrack it might was might was that one <laughs> yeah dude i used to do that all the time and it would be like in certain songs like there would be like some loud noise or like i mean i don't know it just it, it's <laughs> someone's always a little off on i remember you know and then making mixtapes for like the ladies you know that, that was yeah. a good thing back in the day <laughs> first concert was uh it was the family values in 2006 Whoa, nice. yeah man that was the very first time it was so funny because I was just like, why did it take me this long to go to a concert? But at the same time, I was just like, whoa, because it was my first time seeing Mosh Pits in person. So I was just like, you know, I was at the Lakewood <laughs> Amphitheater. So I just, yeah, you know, I had a seat up near, uh, near the middle um, of the venue. But I looked back there and saw that lawn and just seeing the people up there, I was like, my gosh, man. I think that was the that was the time when somebody actually died, I think. Um, oh, wow. Because okay. they fell off of the... Um, you know the area where the lawn is, and it kind of mm -hmm. has that little drop off point where the actual scene yes. is. I think he had fell off, man. So yeah, that was that was crazy, man. Jeez, but, man. Yeah, yeah, that's that's terrible. What a lineup yeah. though. Um Flyleaf. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I missed it. That's so oh, you did, yeah. oh man. I wasn't yeah, there. I don't was know good, why. Man. I, I did I remember when Corn actually did they did Hollow Life that night um from Untouchables, and uh I think uh David, the drummer was in the uh audience mm -hmm. playing on the um oh jimbe yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that was pretty cool because they did kind of like a stripped down uh version of it dude that's amazing man um going back to to family because uh, you always i always get reminded when you, you know i don't know i feel like we're kind of the same you know the closest and titans um did you and your family grow up going on any vacations or is there any like memories you you, you remember like what are your, some oh, of your favorite yeah, memories man. Man, it's, it's, it's so many. There are so many, um, you know, taking trips down to uh, Alabama to see my, my family, my grandmother and uncle and cousins. and Also going down to South Georgia, the Millen, Georgia, my, my aunt and uncle down there because um, my uncle Jimmy, uh, he had a, a um, piece of land down there. It literally it's like a mile to drive into. So it's like you're in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> driving right. a mile into the woods and he had like a, a house out there. Um, but we also took <laughs> trips out in the uh up north Georgia and Helen, Georgia. My mom would oh. take us out there. We got there in the fall. Um then she would take us out to uh what was it, Kelly Gardens. Yeah, we would go there in like in the springtime. You know, she always tried to make sure like when we had like those those break school breaks that we had stuff to do. So we would always go places like that. Um you know, my mom and dad would take us to Disney World when we were younger. So, and we had a lot of fun times, man. A lot of times it was family outings going out. That's great. What What was your mom like growing up? Like when you're in school and I don't know, as a kid, was she like supportive of anything you wanted to do? Were you real close to her? Yes, man. My mom was. Yeah, she she was she was everything. She she was so supportive of my brother and I and anything that we wanted to do. Um, mm -hmm. Just really. Really one of those moms that you can just tell any and everything um, to. Um, yeah, it's very close. I remember when I got into corn and uh, she was like, oh, gosh, this is, <laughs> this is loud. But it is so funny how uh, 
you know, I would do my homework in the kitchen and um, I'll be playing my music on the computer as I'm doing my homework. And it was, you know, certain songs she, she would hear and it was like kind of catchy. So she would hear, you know, she liked Hollow Life. It was so funny. She did. The, yeah, oh, yeah, it was so funny because when she heard that song, she was like, that's corn. I was like, yeah, because, you know, it was like a song where Jonathan's actually like really like singing, singing in it. Mm -hmm. So she was kind of surprised by that. But um, she loved Coming Undone by them. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah. So I had a video, a little video snippet that I found that I took of her dancing to it in our kitchen. Um, oh, while yeah. Playing it, man. It was so awesome. Her doing it. But she loved it because she always said it had the, the queen beat to it. So mm. she loved that. Um, she loved Liga Parts Faint. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Because she loved the intro with the with the violins and That's, stuff. Yeah. So it was so cool, man. She just always, uh, just was always invested in us and always did things with us. Um, when I remember, I had a corn. Uh, I think I showed it to you that corn issues uh, poster. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I got it from media play, and you know she was working at a, as a counselor at school, and. Um, mm. I wanted to get it laminated because I didn't want anything to happen to it. So mm -hmm. she took it to school and got it laminated. And I just thought it was so awesome. I'm like, here it is. My mom's going to school. Got this the corn, corn buster with all these guys <laughs> on there. I can only imagine what the teachers and staff were thinking, man. But I just love the fact that she didn't even, you know, she didn't care. She, you know, she that's how she was. She would do stuff for us. Um, when it came to Christmas, she always... Not only got what we wanted, but she would go beyond that, man. She just always went out her way uh, to get for us. I remember when the Nintendo 64 was coming out, mm -hmm, yeah. and I told her I wanted it. And so they had the pre-orders back at Taurus Us back then. And it was coming out in September that year. She was like, I'll pre-order it, but you're not going to get it till Christmas. So... <laughs> You know, she got it a little yeah. so funny. You know, she had, she had it in the closet, and I would just take it out and play with the controller, not even playing the system, just <laughs> playing with the controller, right. you know, months before Christmas. Dude, but, that um, is so cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah Christmas was, really was cool, bigger man. back then when we were younger, you it know? Was, like, man. <laughs> the excitement, man. It was so good. I remember um, one Christmas, I wanted, because um, I was so deep in the Power Rangers, man, as a kid, and I went to the, the White Ranger with the White Tiger Resort, and my mom went everywhere trying to find Aww. it, and I ended up getting it for Christmas. What was crazy, though, uh, one of her co-workers um, was trying to get one for her son, too, so mm -hmm. she, her co-worker ended up going to Toys R Us and found two of them, and you know, she got one for my mom, so my mom just paid her the money for it. So I just thought that oh, she yeah. did not stop until she found it, man. That was like one of the best Christmases, man. That was, it was so awesome. Dude, that reminds me of that, that movie Jingle All the Way with uh, Arnold oh, Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. They're both trying to get that one toy, you know? Yeah, we were just getting it. This past <laughs> Christmas come out. My wife, she never saw it before, so we sat down and watched it, man. That, oh, that you did? one of my favorites, yeah. She never saw it before. I did, though. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Gosh, man! Or do you have one? Are you guys Christmas people? It's so many, man. We we were looking at so many this 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 Christmas, man. I like the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. We actually oh, yeah. watched the um the series again on Disney Plus, which was just awesome, man. They they did really good on it. They had two oh seasons. yeah, I started watching that too. Yeah, 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 man. So we watched that. Um, you got a little Home Alone. Oh, of course. The first two, and then a Christmas Story. You know, those I can't. I can't it's hard for me to pick like one out of all of those, man. I absolutely love all of those movies. <laughs> yeah. Is your brother? I'm trying to remember. Is he how how? What's the age difference between you, you and your brother? Yeah, my brother is five years older than me. Yo, yes, yeah, so my yo. brother is too. I think we may have already talked about <laughs> no, this that's before. Right, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Are you? Are you the older one or the younger one? I'm the younger one. Yeah, my brother. Me, oh my gosh, dude, one. we're the same, dude. Yep. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And like I like my mom. I, growing up, I was always like, I'm the favorite, even though we don't say. I'm just kidding. I don't know if I'm the favorite <laughs> or not, but that was the joke. <laughs> Did your mom like have a favorite? Were you were you the mama's boy? Like, or did? Oh she... yeah, I mean we yeah. both were, but yeah, when it came to to uh, our sibling like bickering and stuff, I always was kind of one that that won my mom over, <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> even man, if I yeah. was the one that was in the wrong. Just yeah, it's something man, about man. that younger sibling, man. The, the younger <laughs> yeah, sibling, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, God, man, we're so oh, similar that way. That's 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 so cool. Uh, I, you know. And I'm sorry for your mom's loss. I don't know if we even brought that up, but you know, um, man, I'm I'm truly uh, I'm always here for you, man. Everybody's here for you because you're such you. a great guy. Thank you, man. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, this is uh, it's one of those life changing things, man. When it happens, and it was one of those things that you know, my mom was was sick for a while for years with like cancer, and even with 
us, you know, knowing that, you know, her death was definitely not expected at the time that it happened. So it was definitely one of those just challenging times for us all. And mm. still at times, you know, it's just it's a constant just ebb and flow of emotions throughout the year. You know, that's why I always try to, you know, do videos talking about it because I know other people have gone through it. Um, I feel like I always say this all the time, transparency and, and being vulnerable I feel like it's so important because people have to know that they're not the only per people that are going through what they're going through. And if we mm -hmm. stay silent on those things, you know, how are we helping people? So, you know, I always try to be honest about the things I've dealt with or am going through. Um, Cause I want people to think that I'm, I'm any different than anybody else. You know, we all have our, our struggles and, and battles in life. So. Yeah. And when you, you, you're so vulnerable. I remember when you were talking about in one of your video blogs, um, man, it truly hit me, man. So, yeah, just thank you for sharing all that. Oh, you're you welcome, know. Scott. Man, you're welcome. That, that's a lot of people. Uh, I feel you know, one thing just to, to keep my mom legacy alive is to really kind of pay homage to her and, and, and give honor to the life that she lived. So, I always try to find times to you know, to bring up memories or talk about mm -hmm. the things that she's done so that you know, our memories are kept alive. Oh, that's great. Um, do you ever like, this is a weird question, but do you ever like have dreams of her or anything? Or do you ever, I mean, I don't know, like if, if that's a thing. I've never lost a loved one so close. Yeah. Like that. You know, it's it's weird because I've had some here and there um, throughout the years, but it's, it's not as much as I thought I would have had, which mm -hmm. is, is interesting. You know, I thought I would have dreams all the time, but I, I haven't had a lot since she passed. So that, that definitely is something that I was kind of surprised of. Um, you know, the crazy thing I never really talked about with people is, is like when she passed away, like two weeks, I really, it was the hardest to sleep. Really? Because, yeah, it's it's because when she passed, it was just, it was crazy because it was just one of those things where trying to cope with it. And then just, for me, it was the weirdest thing was I was afraid to go to sleep because I didn't know what I was going to dream. Mm. And so I would, for like almost two weeks, I would just literally try to stay up as long as I could because I just didn't want to go to sleep because I was just afraid. I was literally afraid of the things I would dream about when I would go to sleep. You know, with having that all happen, mm -hmm. you know, you can't control what's going on in your mind when you sleep. So I was just like, yeah, that was, that was that was the hardest time. And then eventually I was able to get to a point of just able to just rest. <laughs> and I think a lot of it yeah. came from me just trying to force myself to stay up. But yeah, that was, that was one of the things I went through when she passed away, man, just trying to just accept it, mm -hmm. which is weird because I had, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I, I, I felt that peace in the sense that she wasn't hurting anymore, wasn't suffering, but it's just, wasn't fully at peace of accepting that happening you know i just yeah. even now parts of me just like you know gosh mom should still be here you know to see her her niece you know she wasn't allowed to see her niece she wasn't allowed to see me get married so it's just all these things i think about mm. like man what if she was still here mm -hmm. yeah so um when you said that you couldn't sleep that reminds me so much of um john five who's in motley crew and and marilyn manson all these bands but on stage he had a meltdown and and he started fighting Marilyn Manson almost on stage, and they oh, yeah, they interviewed him. Did you hear about that. this? Yeah, but they I, I forget what was the insight of, of about that so he said that his sister passed away and that he couldn't man. sleep and he said the same man. thing you did he said Dude, that he this... stayed up for days and days and then he said he was on stage and just man. had a meltdown i'm you telling know? you man see so, that's so other that's... people have the same thing yeah i'm, I'm telling you it, it's that's why it, it's i totally sympathize when i see posts especially on facebook when i see people that are grieving losing somebody because mm -hmm. you know some people don't have that empathy or sympathy if they haven't gone through it yet some people you know a lot of people do but you know there's some people like gosh you're still talking about this it's like people don't understand until you're on that other side of dealing with that person not being here 
it's no way you can really understand it. Um, yeah, so mm-hmm. to know that he, that that happened because of him losing his, his sister, yeah, it's like it's, yeah. it's crazy. You're dealing with a, a wide range of emotions, and you know, of course, his touring schedule and stuff, and him trying to cope with that. I can True. only imagine how it was for him. So, you know, some people could look at that and be like, "Gosh," but it's like I always feel you gotta have grace and mercy, man, and just mm-hmm. understand, you know, understand people and what they may be dealing with. Everybody deal with things differently, and it may not be the same as as what we may may feel. So, you express your feelings uh, when you when you did a blog or video. I call it video blog. I don't know if that's old school. <laughs> like, there's some easy way of saying that. <laughs> but you, yeah, I think you talked about your mom passing. Was that what was that like? Hitting record and sharing your emotions and posting Man, it on the internet. That was crazy, and I, it's, it's it's crazy. I look back and it's just it's. I'm always kind of surprised at how much I recorded stuff you know i should be doing more videos now and i haven't done a lot just because of my scheduling just things but it's like Mm -hmm. i'm always kind of surprised sometimes i look back at those videos and that i was willing to to be that vulnerable um i'm just i guess i'm a person i I don't care about how people see me because i'm you know i'm doing those videos for other people beyond just myself this it a part of it is for me to get my feelings out but it's kind of a selfless thing too because i want to help people with what i'm dealing with because they may be going through the same thing so it's like you know all these videos i try to be just selfless and think about it's not about me you know and um i think yeah. it's um, i think you do such a great job with it and you do the thing that i can't do and a lot of people can't do is just hit record and just start speaking yeah. That's a skill, man. You know what it's, I mean? You know what's so crazy though, Scott? It, it, it's crazy, man. I some of my videos I do like more than one time because it's just like I, I just my mind's like everywhere. So some mm-hmm. videos I do is just like, man, a lot of those emotional videos are just one off though. It's just I'm literally just hitting record, but sometimes I, you know, when it's not those types, I'm just kind of Try to have some structure right. to doing it, but see this right here. I'm not used to doing live <laughs> stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is totally how <laughs> I feel, man. You're you're like the first person, and maybe I don't know, maybe the only person that I would do this with because I'm Thank not you. used. To, oh yeah, you're welcome, man. I'm not used to um doing live videos because I'm I always get kind of nervous about not having a sense of what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm just yeah, I get man, the same so way. I'm just always like, God, I hope I do this right. I hope I don't sound crazy. But um, oh, okay, okay. So <laughs> I got a question for you. When you do a yeah. blog, when or I call them, I don't know what you call them. What do you call them? Do you just call them video diary or something like this? Is yeah, just, like vlogs and stuff. Vlogs, yeah. yeah. So you have you ever posted one, gone to bed, and then wake up and go, oh, I got to delete that one, or I got to fix that one, or do you ever want to go back and <laughs> critique yourself? You know what? Some of my some of my older videos of guitar covers I've done, I'm just like, how did I even think this? Is <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I listen to some of the songs, some of the, the songs I've covered and just hear the screw ups I did, I'm just like, how did I even upload this? How did I even <laughs> let this pass when I knew I could do better than this? But that's so funny. Sometimes I just try to hurry up and rush and do stuff. So I'll just try to hurry up and upload something. But yeah, sometimes yes. I'm just like, dude, like, what was I thinking, man? And then like when I look at my older, older videos of me doing videos, I'm just like, some of it to me is just cringe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but um, <laughs> I can I can still live with some of the ones more like recent, like past three, four, five years. But like my early ones, like gosh, <laughs> man, like 2013 or 14, I'm just like, who did I think I was? So so do it's you crazy. like? Here's here's what I do. Like I don't watch my old stuff constantly. Like don't do that. But yeah. I'll have days where I just go back and watch a couple of them, and it's very hard. Do you go back and watch them, or do you, do you just post them and you know every once in a while revisit them? You know, I, I usually post them and just be done with it. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's. Smart. Um, but it's when the memories, it's when the memory parts come back on Facebook. Yeah, like when you see the memories, and I'm just like, it's so funny how I'll sit <laughs> and like, do I want to repost this, or I'll see something I'm like, I actually like that one. I'll, I'll just re, I'll reshare it again because I actually like that cover. I like what I said, but some of them just like, gosh, man, what was I thinking? <laughs> do you get? Do you ever get feedback or like? your video helped me and, and saved me and from, you know, whatever they were going through. Man, I get a lot of that, a lot of that. And, um, gosh, I, it becomes so hard. Cause I, I, I truly genuinely care for people and the things that they go through. And sometimes it can honestly be overwhelming because 
I'll get people to reach out to me. Either it's a video that I've done or it's just something they're going through and they, they come to me. And I just, I see how people can get overwhelmed because it's like you start hearing a lot of problems that people are facing. Um, and you try to give the best sound advice that you can give them. But then you feel like a responsibility as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you get, like, I haven't been on Messenger as much because I get, I've gotten so many, like, just messages man i'm wow. just like i'm just i'm only one person but i try to do the best i can that's and, and you know that's why i try to do the videos because i try to at least do something that i feel like is gonna help multiple people at one time you know there are definitely times when i scroll i'll see somebody uh somebody post something um of course some of the people that i've known for years if they've gone through something i'll reach out to them and i'll do a video or 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 text them and, and just say I'm praying for them and just, you know, sometimes God will put on my heart, like, message this person right now. Mm. And I'll just I'll just do it. Um, especially when I've seen people that have family members that passed away. So, yeah, man, I, I definitely have had a lot of people um, reach out to me. Uh, I, I'm just humbled by the fact that people even would do that. And, um, you know, I just try to do the best I can to to be there for people when I can. But at the same time, I, I've had to learn to to not take so much on because <laughs> you could just feel the weight of pe of what people are going through. And I'm not trying to find that fine balance of, of being somebody that can help people and at the same time knowing the limitations so that I'm not <laughs> right feeling overwhelmed myself. It's hard, God, man. man. That's it's like hard. That, yeah. Wow. Man, it's hard. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, giving, getting, you, you send me like these, these, uh, like voicemails and recordings, like for holidays and just random things. Yeah, man. And they're the best, man. They mean oh, so man. much. Thank you. thank you. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Man. I don't know if, yeah. I mean, I I'm, I'm it, always man. happy to get that. Likewise to you, man. When you, when you do it to me, man. It, it, it yeah. Mine aren't good, as good. Man. Mine's like, yeah, thanks, <laughs> man. <laughs> Love you, true. guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, Scott, man. It's, it's, it's awesome, man. I appreciate it, too. It's so wild, too, because you started doing these video blogs. And, I mean, did you think that all these people are going to – you're going to reach so many people and they're going to send you messages? Or were you just doing it for you? You know what I mean? I, well, you know, I, I was trying to uh, – you know, I was really trying to do it for others. You know, um, I, don't, I don't – I'm trying to figure out what really led to me doing that. Because, you know, I started doing PLD Media and I'm still trying to do that. So, um, you know, I wanted to use that platform to try to use that – for other people um oh yeah pld yeah, media man, yeah yeah keep going i'm sorry oh yeah 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 but it's like man when when you know it's really you that i mean it, it's crazy scott the connection that that we made and you know because of me and you getting connected that opened the door for me and connecting with other people and that's what really just kind of just elevated it you know when you you let me meet Corey lowry and then clint and then head and then from there i met monkey too from corn and then ray so it's just crazy man it's like yeah. once i start meeting all of them uh that just opened it up more so it's just it's, it's crazy man but you you had the biggest role in that because that wouldn't happen no nah, dude i mean me, man so oh, well, i appreciate that man but you you you're on another level man and that pl pld the pld am i saying all right that's uh yeah pld media yeah yeah man can you talk a little bit about that yeah so that was uh i was already brainstorming that like in what was it 2018 it was around the time when i went to your house this, uh for the Corey lowry interview so i was already oh, just yeah. kind of brainstorming i was like man i need to come up with something where i could just use a platform to just kind of you know serve people the music inspiration and creativity all the things that i'm passionate about having something that culminates all of that and just try to reach people through that you know so you know my mom passed cool. away that just really it just lit a fire in me to, to really do it, man. I looked at, you know, her funeral and just seeing everybody that came to her funeral, just, it was just overwhelming to see how many people that showed up and seeing that I was like, man, I want to live a life where I can have a legacy like that to where I've served people. Cause my mom just served people and parents through education. And it was just amazing to see how many, how many people honored her life. And she was selfless in it. You know, she wasn't looking to get anything out of it, man. So she, you know, God gave me mom, my parents as great examples of just living a life of just trying to serve people. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do with the PLD me. And that's been, that's 
gosh, this has just been an ongoing thing, man, because last year I was nowhere near as productive as I wanted to be. And that's what I'm starting to learn, man, with doing stuff like this, especially when it comes to like content creating. It's a, it's a lot of work, man. It's a yeah. lot of stuff that people don't realize, especially if you're doing it on your own, when you're trying to record by yourself and do video edits and all that stuff. It's a whole lot to it, man, that people just don't realize until you're actually trying to do it. So I'm still trying to get a rhythm and a routine because I haven't been as consistent. I'll do stuff here and there, but not as consistent as I, I want to be. So it's difficult because you're yeah. working too. Yeah, so like man, you it's hard. These man. long hours. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, at work, you got family, man. It, it's, it's been so crazy for us. You know, the past couple of years since I've been here in, in Greenville, man, uh, since 2019 with everything with the pandemic. And then we had so many different issues between then and now that has happened that just, it was just, it gives me more respect for everybody that like entrepreneurs and people, especially guys in bands, man, when they're out there on the road and just crushing it. You got families. I don't, it takes a certain drive, man. I'm just, that's why I always tell myself like, man, I got to get together. I'm just seeing people who are, you know, younger and older. They're just crushing it, man. And mm -hmm. It inspires me to do more. I, I love the the platform you're talking about with the PLD is just helping others and serving yeah, others. Man. How cool is that, man? Yeah, man. It's, that's it's, so, it's, so inspiring. I, you know, that's why I, just, I, I, I try to, you know, I, I hope that the things that I do will empower and inspire people to do the same thing. Um, Cause we live in a very selfish world, man. And just like, what can I, what can I get out of this? You know? So I'm, I'm trying to, to do things in a way where I'm, I'm giving back to people and just making content that's going to really actually give people something whether it's entertainment through the music or inspiration through, you know, my messages, man. I hope that it's just, it's giving back to people. I'll, I'll say this forever for any time we're on a podcast or whenever I've given my good company shirt out to a million, a million, a, you know, <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of musicians. Yeah, yeah. You give your shirt out to Brian Welch. I think he literally put it on, you know, <laughs> as you're handing it to him. I yeah, mean, he's in, crazy, doc, he's in interviews wearing him. He's on backstage wearing them. That, that was, is amazing. That was so surreal, man. How cool is that I, to see? Yeah, him? that was, that was, that was crazy. Cause I remember you messaging me back in February of 2019 that you were going to do that interview. So I was yeah. already just stoked, man. It was just crazy. I will never forget it, man, because you had I had that that I was gonna go to your house. And then they had that the contest for uh Loud Crazy Love, the Blu-ray mm -hmm. that was gonna be released. And it was in a, it was a contest where if you gave like a proof of purchase that you can uh win a meet and greet. So I literally won that meet and greet. And I had the uh, the interview that I was going to at your house. Wow, that's so, so cool. So it, it was crazy. And that's what, you know, when I went to your house and I told, you know, hey, I was like, dude, this is going to be really crazy, man. But I was like, that contest that you had for Loud Crazy Love, I was like, I want it. And he was like, dude, what? And that's oh, when he pulled yeah. his phone now. He said, Paul Hobson. I said, yeah. He was like, dude, man, the Holy Spirit told me to pick you, man. So it was just crazy, man. I, 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 yeah, that's amazing. The Holy Spirit yeah. told me to pick you, yeah. That was crazy, man. I feel like that was just God and all of that, man. The fact that, you know, first of all, me and you connected because that wouldn't even yeah. happen if, we, if you and I didn't connect. But then that whole, you know, winning that contest, I just feel like God did something where head on his side knew that this happened beyond us. <laughs> yeah. And I had this happen, you know, with uh, coming to your house. And you're like, oh, hey, God, I won. That. <laughs> yeah. So it was just, dude, it was so surreal, man. I think that was something that God made happen to where we would never, we will never forget that. That was just something that was just, we couldn't have planned that if we tried, you know, Absolutely. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was just so crazy. So it was funny that that night where, um, the, after the corn concert, we were backstage mm -hmm. and I told him, I was like, dude, you, you're wearing a shirt. He was like, yeah, man, I was yeah. wearing it all day. <laughs> that was just so crazy, man. And now I remember him saying, man, I gotta let you meet monkey, man. And then that was a whole, just, that was a whole deep, thing right there man meeting him because Was we it? got in a whole yeah. yeah man we got in a whole deep conversation we were talking music and stuff but then we started talking about our mothers because he, he his mom passed away around the same age that i was you know i was around 30 mm. i think 35 36 when my mom passed away and he lost his mom around the same time so we man we were sitting standing there backstage you know he talking about his mom and her final days and i was talking about my mom and her final days and he was literally getting goosebumps off arm as we were talking about it man so that was so, I will never forget that because to me, 
that was something that just went beyond the music at that point, man. It was just mm -hmm. forget the musical aspect. We were we were connected on a thing that was just beyond that, you know, because when somebody passed, especially when a when you lose a parent, man, that's just something that once you feel it, you know, that's something that will resonate with anybody else that has, has lost their uh mom or dad. So that was just really an awesome experience to have that, man. I bet you, you know, he'll he will remember that too when he gets off tour, and you know what I mean. Like he sees and meets people every day, but talking about you know relating to somebody losing their their mom, I yeah, mean, I'm man. sure that meant a lot to him too. Just you talking to him, vice versa. Yeah, yeah, man. It was it was. I mean, I was going through the details of my mom's final day, and he was going through the details of, of her last day in the hospital too. And I was just like, man, it was just it was it was crazy hearing that. And you know, I'm thankful for those opportunities that God's got me has connect me with people like him and Clint and just all these guys, man, because he's, he's shown me through this, that they, these are people, you know what I mean? We can get mm -hmm. so caught up in the gifts that people have that we can just totally forget that these, at the end of the day, these are people that have families, you know, they're their husbands, they got kids, you know, and that's what's so cool, man. Just being able to appreciate them, the guys in corn and seven does seeing them where they are now, man. I'm just, I'm just so thankful that nothing has happened to them. And I've told them this too. I was like, I'm thankful I didn't have to wake up one day and hear one of you all have died because of a drug overdose and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's just cool to see them now, man, and see that they've matured and got. They're all it's like cool super thing, healthy. Man. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's <laughs> like, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm just excited about that aspect as I am with the musical aspect to see them, especially mm -hmm. you, know, Clint, you know how he goes to the physical stuff and and john from seven us marathon scene just, just crushing it man i'm like dude i don't even know if i can do that <laughs> yeah man. yeah i love watching them gr grow get old and just and, and they're all doing so well yeah man yeah I, I, I love seven dust man uh how can people how can people like find you if they just want to watch your blogs and stuff is there like a do you have a facebook page just for that or just yeah your I personal do got a page? yeah i got a, the pld media facebook facebook page too and i'm gonna start getting more content out uh soon on there i got a pld me a youtube channel which is like the bigger place but i'm trying to do more of my stuff on there as well oh cool um, that's cool yeah, i'll try to tag the, all these on there on oh the thanks TV. man yeah and i got a P, uh, pld website too that, that i really need to just revamp because i have it's been the same for the longest time so i'm gonna try to just restructure it oh <laughs> so yeah just, so you make your website this, yeah <laughs> That's such a pain, dude. Like I, yeah, I have man. mine. I never look at it. Gosh, I, man, it's hard. You know, when I, when I had the PLD media shirts, you know, I was, and I still do it. Like you know, people will order one. I do it myself. So it's just like, man, it's like I said, yeah. you, you're the one man show trying to do everything. It could it could be overwhelming, man. But I try to do. You know, when I've had those shirts, I try to do like a thank you note with those oh, shirts, cool. just to do as a thank you, like an actual handwritten note to every person that that buys one, man. I'm like, here it is. You're spending money to support this platform the least i could do is is write a note to say thank you for that so that's yeah, super cool that. of you i gotta yeah, do that man. dude yeah <laughs> so so tw 2024 I, I was looking at my Ticketmaster. all the i'm going to a bunch of shows this year it's weird to say oh, this man. year 2024 <laughs> it know. feels like the 90s dude i mean i'm going yeah, to see dude. creed limp biscuit pantera it's, you know what i mean like it's, it's like all... a resurgence man it's so cool to see. i'm happy to see it too man it's like you know, for us, it like it never left us, but it's just like I'm yeah. glad that it seems like these bands are are, are getting noticed once again, man. It, to me, I know everybody says their era was the best era, but I'm telling you, man, it was something about the '90s, the mid '90s, early 2000s, where it just seemed like the creative just aspect of music just exploded, man. And almost like every genre is just yes, I agree, dude, 100. So awesome, man. Do you have any um, guilty? music pleasures from the 90s that you wouldn't want to like you can share now obviously but <laughs> no i'm just kidding but think? It, i have so many and Corey, Corey, um <laughs> from slipknot cory uh cory oh, Corey Taylor. Taylor. yeah he's like i don't believe in guilty pleasure i'm like you don't know my list man <laughs> like, mine, are, <laughs> mine are pretty bad <laughs> oh man but i used to be like in the 90s i, I used to love like crisscross i would wear my clothes backwards like i was oh, yeah. i was total yeah. 90s dork man <laughs> yeah that was you, me too <laughs> oh really? Oh yeah. yeah. I used to I'm love. I actually try to. I, I try to cut my eyebrows with the little lines like they did. No. <laughs> like yeah. Nice. You did them yourself. 
I oh, can't remember I did. I might have. <laughs> Dude, I, I had the parachute pants, like the MC Hammer pants. Like oh, I was yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I didn't I wouldn't yeah, it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, man, I, I man, is there anything else, man? I, I appreciate you being on the show, man. This is really cool. Yeah, man, thank you for having me, Scott. Man, dude, I, I definitely I feel again humbled, man, that you even had me on your show. You had so many just awesome people on here. Um, so just for you taking the time out to even have me be on here, I appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, thanks, man, dude. I, 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 man, I love you. Like you're like family to me, man. And we, it's crazy, Likewise, you're, man. Yeah, when you're like, like 2019, yeah, 17, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was so funny before we before we did this. I was like, let me see when I first spoke to the sky. And it was 2017, man. Cause I wrote you about <laughs> I was like, dude, I love the interview you did with with, with Clint and Head, the first interview you did with Head. Oh, I'm surprised yeah. you liked that interview. <laughs> oh yeah, man. It was good. That was rough. <laughs> yeah. Everybody starts from awesome. somewhere. Hey, uh, yeah, that's you, right. Man. That's right. No problem. Yeah, Scott. man. But we gotta keep doing more of these. And man, I, it'd be so cool if you. Uh, I'm trying to tell you what to do, but it'd be cool if you had your like a platform where you just like a podcast where you just speak. You know, that'd be so cool, man. Because I, would hey, I, I, I might just do it, man. I, I, it's so funny. I was I was thinking about the other day. I was like, could I do I have enough like content to to do a, a podcast by myself? I'm just like, but I've, I've thought about it. So you never know. You never know. Yeah. The last thing is, um, next time Seven Dust comes, we gotta like. You're great at this, getting the 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 seven us fan club guys all together for pictures oh, yeah. and just hanging out. We really need to like, I I want to be there yeah. next time and just yeah, we need a real one, man. Because yeah, yeah. The, the one that we had back in October, I missed out, man. Because I was back mm. he's talking to John. Oh yeah, <laughs> so that's cool too. Out. Yeah, that was fun. That was cool. Yeah, that was. Yeah, but we all got to hang out sometime, man. I love the family. Uh, I love what what uh, Sammy and, and Chris are doing. That's Definitely, really cool. Man. You got I anything else I you want to say? Uh, I think that's it, Scott. That's man, I it, man. Appreciate it, man. I'm I'm gonna try. You know, this year I'm gonna definitely tr- um try to do more things as far as PLD me is concerned. I'm I'm trying to be better about not just saying things, um, mm. because I don't want to <laughs> say stuff and they don't live up to it. So I'm just like, you know, what, let me just I'll just say it. I'm playing some stuff this year. That's a good. That's that. That's a good way to end it right there, man. <laughs> yeah. Paul, you're the best, man. Man, Thank you too, you. Scott, man. Yes, dude. And you got to come hang out next time you're around yes. in town. That'd be it's, cool. It's been a minute, man. I got to come over there and play uh, ping, ping pong, pong with, with Knox. Yeah, man. Yeah, dude. It was kicking my butt last time. <laughs> you're the best, brother. You too, Scott. Love I you, man. You, man. Love you, man. Take care. You too.